stage three of the Bass Pro Tour is just days away, so we went around and asked some of the MLF pros who they think has the best shot at winning it all on Lake Fork. Besides themselves, of course. It's elimination round two of the 2018 Major League Fishing World Championship. It's a warm, windy March day here in eastern Florida, and today our anglers were fishing here on Stick Marsh. Hey, I'm Rachel, and I have 60 seconds to tell you about three big things that you missed if you didn't watch the MLF Now live stream today. The Phillips have a security camera set up outside their house, but unfortunately, it wasn't recording. That rate hike is going to cost him about $5 a month. That may not sound like a lot, but if you're on a fixed income that's two and a half gallons of gas that doesn't go in your tank if you get a dwi you'll probably have to get a device installed in your car that requires you to take a breathalyzer test before you can start it that will cost you at least 75 dollars a month but if you're required to have that for 10 months you're talking about 750 dollars just to start your engine that ice storm put about 75,000 people in the dark, and fixing that problem was no easy task. If you live in Battlefield earlier this month, you got a letter that looks like this, and it's all about how much you pay for this. Pull back that comforter, check the sheets, pull back the rest of the bedding. Look at the mattress. They like to hide in these seams and in the cracks, so that's where you want to look for those bed bugs. Then lift up the mattress. Look for any bed bugs underneath there. Now remember, they're skinny, only about the width of a credit card, so they can squeeze in almost anywhere. So I can't believe it, but the rain is still coming down, and it's coming down good. We're hearing, well, did you see that? That was lightning. We're hearing thunder as well. It's pretty crazy out here. We've been driving around all evening looking for flooded areas across Fern County. But, oh, did you hear that? More thunder. I'm gonna show you an area right over here. This is by far the worst. You saw a picture of it earlier. This is a live look. A on Highway 60 at that Ford dealership, there are quite a few cars that are underwater. I'm talking water up to the windows. When the city is coated in ice this thick, it's a good idea to just stay at home. This is how a lot of people in Laclede County started their day. Ice is a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. Nida Dickman is visiting Lebanon for work. I liked it until now. <laughs> I've been here all week, and now I'm heading back. She's headed home to Iowa. The storm is going where I'm going. Dickman is one of the people who had no choice but to brave the interstate. But even this semi was no match for an icy bridge on I-44. The bridge was awful slick, so he probably was having too fast for conditions on these roadways today. This wreck was in northern Laclede County near the Gasconade River. Just a few miles west on I-44, another car slid off the road and into a ditch. People think, oh, it's just raining, and they want to go normal speeds, and you can't, because then we have this. Some people who stayed home got stuck without power. It's just something we have to put up with in this part of the country, you know, and, but I don't think anybody enjoys this kind of weather. Kenneth Weaver says this storm is nothing compared to the one in 2007, which left him in the dark for over a week. Uh, reading mostly, or I can see, you know using a flashlight to read a book. They say every storm cloud has a silver lining. I like the ice because you get to go play out with your family and stuff and play on the roads and have fun. Unfortunately, that silver lining won't make the drive home any easier. It looks like it's going to be nasty. I'm not going to get away from it, so I'll figure something out. Okay, so we've seen people put a cardboard or a tarp over their windshield to keep ice from building up. This guy put his floor mats over his windshield. I thought that was kind of clever. I just wanted to share that with you guys. This is where it happened. Two weeks ago, Janetta Bird was walking out of this garden center. She was pushing her cart, and then all of a sudden, a pickup truck hit her. Now, she's still in a rehab facility with a long road to recovery ahead of her. When it happens so fast, you don't really have time to see what's going on. It was just like, bam, and that was it. Janetta Bird says she didn't see it coming. He just whizzed around and took off. But she does remember what happened right after she was hit. Yes, he left me there, and all of the people from Walmart, you know how the people that come and, and bring in the carts with the rope, you know, they're coming, they dropped everything. They're bringing those in, and they dropped everything and come running over there to help me. You see it all in this surveillance video. The blue pickup pulls into a parking space for a few minutes. The driver gets out, but doesn't seem to go into the store. And then he and another person get into the truck, pull out of the spot, and take off. The truck hits Bird's cart and knocks her over.
The driver hardly slows down. We have a maniac on the loose and he's going to do it against somebody else. Dr. Gil Mobley says he happened to be leaving the Walmart when he saw Bird on the pavement. And immediately got some ice and you can actually tell by looking at Mrs. Bird that from here up, thank God she was okay. She explained that she had been hit and struck and that she had fallen and taken a severe blow to her right hip. He says this collision could have been deadly. We as a community have a bigger issue. Who is this person that did this? Number one, probably a male. Number two, probably impaired. Number three, probably alcohol, probably addicted to it. It's probably in the cab is why the SOB kept going. Would you do this to your mother or your grandmother? <laughs> we just let them lay there in the gravel there in the roadway. I mean, wouldn't you stop and say something? Now Bird is in a wheelchair recovering from a broken hip. It hurts. She has to learn to walk all over again. Man, it did look like an elephant leg. But she's still smiling. Cause I'm pretty tough. Tough and determined to get back on her feet. That's my mission now is just to get well and see if I can be out on a crusade. She certainly has a great attitude. Now, hit and run wrecks actually pretty common. In fact, according to police records, there have been seven in this lot right here so far this year. But we are not talking about scratches and dents on a car. We are talking about a very serious injury that changed a woman's life forever. And that's why police are asking you to help them find the person responsible. Jerry, the story begins with this huge tree. You see those branches that stretch over the roof of the house. The homeowner wanted to get those trimmed before the winter comes and storms take them out. But Clearly, the guy she hired didn't do the work. People can look you right in the eye and be lying to you, and I guess, I guess I'm just appalled by it. And Schonert says she got a bid from a tree trimmer to take these limbs down and cut down three other trees. A piece of notebook paper, yes, a piece of notebook paper. No contract form. Schonert says this is the bid they gave her, $800 for the work. The name of the business that's listed is J and K Trees and More. And I then asked him, I said, when do I pay you? I wish I had not asked that. And he said, I like to get uh, at least half of it up front. She says she paid $400 before they started working. We sat out here and waited for about an hour and a half, and I kept dialing and couldn't get anybody to answer. She says when the workers showed up a day late, they took out these trees, clipped some branches, and left the mess for Schonert's son to clean up. She says the workers demanded more money to remove the limbs and then threatened her. She said, when we get our other brush from other jobs, we're going to dump it right here on your property. And I'm not even going to begin to tell you what we're going to do to you. People do get burned. Noel Boyer owns a certified tree trimming business in Springfield. We would never, ever ask anybody to pay us for a job until it's completely done. That's one huge red flag. He says make sure the tree trimmer you hire is licensed and insured. Get that verification from the insurance agency themselves, though. You can't really trust a piece of paper that somebody shows you. Boyer says online reviews can help you find a reputable tree trimmer. We couldn't find a website or any reviews for J&K Trees and More. Are you... Joe Jones of J and K Trees and More. Yeah. This morning we got a hold of the tree trimmer over the phone. He says he didn't do anything wrong. I'm standing here looking at the tree that you were supposed to trim. It's it's not trim. I'll be right there and I'll, we'll, I'll show you what we're supposed to trim. How's that? All right. He never showed up. I'll be there. Now I realize how important it is to see the paperwork. Schonert says now she's going to have to hire another tree trimmer to do the work she has already paid for. But she says she's going to find someone who's certified and insured. She wanted to share her story to make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else in this community. Jerry? I love it. It's part of my history. Donna Walker grew up in Souter. These two stones are my great-grandfather. And great grandmother. He was a Civil War soldier. Today, she took us on a tour of the town cemetery. He was born in 1922. He died in 1925. Some of her stories are sad. As I remember it, he was in a in a wagon, or a wagon ran over him. But for her, 
This is literally a walk down memory lane. This is my mother and dad. The Souter Cemetery was established shortly after the Civil War. Now more than 800 people have been laid to rest here. These stones here are are really old, the ones with the, the moss poly, P-O-L-L-Y. Cemeteries like this one are peaceful places filled with large trees, green grass, and colorful flowers. But upkeep costs more than you think. Around $1,500, $2,000 a year. E.J. Hampton is the pastor of the Souter Church of Christ. He says his congregation has gotten smaller over the years. If we could get everybody here, we'd have probably 25, 30. He also volunteers his time to maintain the cemetery. Removing the dirt and and raking it down to get everything nice for him, you know. He says it's getting more and more difficult for the church to raise the thousands of dollars it costs to pay for upkeep. We don't charge a plot fee, but we always say that the cemetery is kept up by donations. People don't realize how much money it takes. Walker will be at this cemetery on Sunday to celebrate Memorial Day, or as she calls it, Decoration Day. And my grandmother came every Memorial Day for more than 50 years to decorate graves. She says while people are remembering those who served our country. the U.S. veteran. Souter. They should also appreciate what it takes to care for their graves all year round. There's lots of memories here. Reporting in Souter, Rachel DeBroven, KSPR News.